हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो इन कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ आर चैप्टर मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ट्रांजिशन मेटल कम्प्लेक्सिस लेट्स डिस्कस द अनदर टॉपिक इट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन मैग्नेटिक ससेप्टेबिलिटी एंड मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट नो बिफोर डिस्कसिंग दैट आई वुड लाइक यू टेल यू अबाउट डाया मैग्नेटिक कोरेक्शन यू नो डाया मैग्नेटिक सब्सटांसिस दे हैव नो अनपेड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विच मीन्स दैट मैग्नेटिक मोमेंट इज जीरो but when external field is applied it induces a small magnetic field in opposite to that of the external field so that means diamagnetic substances repel lines of force and they show a slight decrease in weight in goyce method now every molecule has paired electrons so that means every molecule is associated with diamagnetism although these paired electrons they do not contribute to magnetic moment but they affect the magnitude of susceptibility from which the magnetic moment is calculated so that is why there is a need of diamagnetic correction so that means the measured susceptibility it is sum of the susceptibility from the paramagnetism plus that of the diamagnetism so co correction that is applied to this measured susceptibility it will be equal to x measured measured susceptibility minus that of the diamagnetism now come to the expression how it is related now uh, susceptibility it is equal to n not mu square you know mu is the magnetic moment k is the boltzmann constant t is absolute temperature and n not is the avogadro's number if we arrange it then mu square it will be equal to 3k upon n not xm correction into t or mu is equal to under root of 3k upon n not now this term 3k upon n not it is constant because k we know the value of k we know the value of avogadro's constant so when we put it we find that it is 2.828 so equation simplified to that magnetic moment is equal to 2.828 under root of magnetic susceptibility into temperature the units are bohr magneton now how we can experimentally measure the magnetic susceptibility by goyce method the steps which we applied in when we experimentally performed this experiment in the lab number 1 be the empty goyce tube in the absence of ma magnetic field say the value comes out to be a then be the same tube in the presence of magnetic field value comes out to be b then the uh, difference of these two it is equal to delta where which is delta it is due to the diamagnetism of the tube now step number 3 we fill the tube with distilled water to a mark which is there in the goyce tube and then weigh it in the absence of magnetic field let's the value is c then what will be the weight of water c minus that of the empty so c minus a next step we empty the tube we dry it fill it with the standard substance up to the mark weigh the tube in the absence of magnetic field it is d then weigh in the presence of magnetic field it is e so that means there is increase in the weight of sample which is e minus d so this is the force f it is equal to e minus d and f dash it is equal to f minus delta we have discussed that f dash arises because there is some force when the tube is empty okay because it is made up of the diamagnetic material i hope you remember that in the last video so volume of water it is equal to c minus a upon rho where c minus a it is the weight of water so weight upon the density equal to x so alpha it is equal to 0.029 into this volume of water multiplied by 10 to minus 6 so magnetic susceptibility it is equal to alpha plus beta f dash w and we know the value for the standard solution so that means we can find out the value of beta we know the value of magnetic susceptibility for this which is fixed it is given here alpha we know w we know and we can find out beta so beta is the calibration constant for the tube and its value can be used to calculate the magnetic susceptibility of unknown sample now in the next step we will replace this standard substance with the given sample we will repeat the step number 4 and 5 in the absence and in the presence of field we will find out the way so that we can find out f dash and from here we can find out the magnetic susceptibility by using this formula x it is equal to alpha plus beta f upon w so magnetic susceptibility it is then calculated as chi into m m is a molecular weight applying the diamagnetic correction so as to get xm corrected and finally we will put the value of xm corrected 
and we get the value of the magnetic moment. So this is how we can find out the magnetic moment. Moving to next topic, it is the variation of magnetic susceptibility with temperature. Now magnetic susceptibility of any substance, it is temperature dependent and it is explained by Curie. So Curie shows that the paramagnetic susceptibilities, it vary inversely with the temperature. Where C, it is the constant which is characteristic of the substance. Now if we plot the graph between the magnetic susceptibility and the temperature, it is parabolic. If I plot inverse of magnetic susceptibility with temperature, it comes out to be straight line passing through the origin. So both these graphs, they obey the Curie's law. But actually what happens, actually the lines, they are not intersecting. It is found that line does not pass through the origin. It cuts the temperature axis below 0 degree centigrade or above 0 degree centigrade. So that means this is not obeying the Curie's law. There is some need of modified Curie's law, which is called Curie V's law. So we incorporated here theta. So it is C by T minus theta. Theta is also called V's constant. It is a temperature at which the lines cut the T axis. And V's constant includes the intermolecular interactions. So that helps to eliminate the same. Hence, magnetic moment is now given by 2.828 XM corrected T minus theta. Now we have studied paramagnetism and diamagnetism. There are two more terms, paramagnetism and antiferromagnetism that also need attention. They both show dependence on temperature and field strength. It is found that when we plot XM and TK for the paramagnetic substances, we get a parabola as we have discussed. But for ferromagnetic substances, we have found that there is a temperature which is called Curie temperature. Above the Curie temperature, ferromagnetic substances, they follow the Curie's law. This, they show the same graph as shown here. That is the paramagnetism. But below the, this temperature, we have found that the behavior is different and it depends upon the field strength. Similarly, for antiferromagnetic substance, there is a temperature called the Neel temperature. Above the Neel temperature, it shows the paramagnetism. But below the Neel temperature, the behavior is like it susceptibility decreases with decrease in temperature. Now, what is the reason? The reason of these abnormal behavior in both the cases is interionic interactions. These interionic interactions, they have magnitude comparable to thermal energies at the Curie or Neel temperature. But as the temperature decreases, the magnitude increases. Now, let us explain it in a more elaborate way. Now, here in this case of antiferromagnetic substances, magnetic moments of the ions in the lattice, they are aligned in such a way that they cancel each other so that we have mu equal to zero. So above the Neel temperature, the thermal energy is large. So it prevents the effective alignment of the magnetic moments. So this explains the behavior of antiferromagnetic substances. Examples are given here, manganese oxide, manganese dioxide, nickel oxide, iron, vanadium. So magnetic moments in case of ferromagnetic substances, they tend to align in parallel. So that means they, they are in parallel direction, they reinforce each other and above the temperature, which is called the Curie temperature, thermal energies are more or less able to randomize the orientations. But below the tendency to alignment, it is become controlling. So that is why the susceptibility, it increases with decreasing the temperature. Examples are given here. In case of paramagnetism, the arrangement is like they are random. And examples are aluminium, oxygen, we have studied titanium, iron oxide. Now there is one more uh, substance found here is a ferrimagnetic substances. In ferrimagnetic substances, alignment is like that. The magnetic moments are in parallel and anti-parallel directions unequally. Thus resulting in the net magnetic moment. Examples are ferrites. So this is all. And next, in the next video, we will study the next topic. Till then, stay safe, stay home and fight with COVID-19. Thank you.